Hey, what's up guys? Aaron here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2026 mod career mode. This is part number 11 today for the Singapore Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous episode at Spa, the Belgium GP, it was a rather messy affair, but definitely worth a watch for all the chaos and action that was in that episode. And a messy one indeed for both races, the sprint and the main race as we tangled with our teammate and uh, my uh, enthusiasm enthusiasm, let's say, got the better of me in many regards, especially in the sprint race with the collision we had with Gasly, very much emulating Vettel versus Button back in 2010 at the bus stop chicane, then having to recover in the main race early on, making some good moves, and then for a second time in the same episode, we came to blows with our teammate, whether it was on purpose or not, you know, that's up for debate, but from inside the cockpit, it certainly seemed like like just an odd place to let off the throttle. He could have been into the lead then, and instead he was backing into my front wing, and in the end, well, we were just down out. We had no safety guard, no red flag to help us out after that incident, so we lost ground to, well, surprisingly, Fernando Onzo, not Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson also suffered a bit of a poor race, really, at the Belgium Grand Prix. Both McLarens had a tough time with Piastri DNFing out of that one, and McLaren looking a little bit wobbly. They've been, they've been so consistent this season, but I must say the last episode or two, they have looked a little bit vulnerable and Red Bull Ford have been gaining momentum, especially with Fernando Alonso. Two fourth places for him sees him take the lead of the Drivers' Championship for the first time since after the Spanish Grand Prix where he won his first race of the season. So Fernando leads the championship. Myself and Liam Lawson level on points and our teammate took all the plaudits of winning the Belgium. Grand Prix and taking the team to the top of the Constructors' Championship. And with all the recent drama that's been going on between myself and Pierre Gasly in this team internally, at the same time, he is heating up a little bit and looking like the Gasly of last season where he's got that extra edge over me in pure pace over one lap, but hopefully in the races we can do something about it. And we're doing something about the durability side of the car, you know, just seeing that, you know, we've got plenty of R&D points to spare. So I thought, let's go ahead and put purchase some upgrades, alt on the HQ side of things, going for spec 2 on the durability HQ to then unlock the next ICE durability upgrade, because the last two episodes we've noticed the ICE wearing out quite a fair bit, surprisingly. You know, we didn't have this issue in the middle races, but in the last two, the ICEs have been wearing out quite a lot, so trying to counteract that a little bit with that durability upgrade for future ICE parts we take, but I, I think we will probably have to take a penalty in one of these remaining races, but definitely not this episode at Singapore where it's a street circuit, difficult to overtake, definitely not the place to be taking a penalty like that. But before we get into the race weekend, we've got a surprise announcement, or I say surprise, I mean he is towards the end of his career, he's getting old. Nico Hulkenberg is retiring out of Formula 1 at the end of this season, but no announcement on Fernando Alonso as of yet, so he's outlasted Lewis Hamilton, who of course won his 8th World Championship in this career mode series. Uh, you know, uh, some time ago in a previous season, and uh, he retired. Then now he, Nico Hulkenberg is departing Formula One, but Fernando Alonso still tr staying true, and he's actually, you know, defying his age as he is well, currently the lead of the championship. Going into this episode then, there is some movement in the R&D char from Alfa Romeo, Haas and Ferrari and Audi slightly as they move just ahead of Alpine, but the biggest movers are Alfa Romeo, Haas who get ahead of both Alpine and Audi, which is very surprising. So we've seen Audi get one podium at the last two races. Sainz was fighting for the podium also last episode. Are we now going to see Alfa Romeo, Haas getting up there and in the mix uh, Ferrari continuing to build on this momentum after Schumacher got a podium in the last episode. So they're definitely trying to wind up a little bit of performance to try and gain in the championship themselves. And uh, well, for Audi, they continue some slower progress, but still progress nonetheless. So things are getting very tight at the top in the R&D chart as we now go into a very wet Singapore Grand Prix. This is going to make things 
very interesting and a little bit nerve-wracking in qualifying with wet conditions. It's a dry race, I think, so a bit of a compromise on this setup, not setting the car fully up for the wet conditions because we know we're going to otherwise lose performance in a straight line too much in the dry race. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge, I guess, for all of us to navigate this session. Very wet out there. Almost, maybe I would say, full wet conditions, but all of us out on intermediates. But the amount of uh, spray and droplets coming down from the sky, you can see as we go on through the lap, is uh, quite something. So I th definitely think if this was a little bit earlier in the day on Saturday, this would have been full wet. But we're on inters, and the second flying lap is going to be the one for us to get into a bit of a groove, feel a bit more comfortable in the car. We've gone purple for a sector. We're going to gain just about 1.6 seconds on that second lap skating across the line to get up into ultimately what will be p5 to get through into the second bar of qualifying Gasly's the one looking a bit odd out down in p13 but i think everyone was struggling with those tricky conditions because if you look at the fuel spread it's so much higher than we've had in the last couple of episodes you know two seconds down to p13 is unheard of in the last you know this season and and, and, the, and the last one really but mclaren again looking strong in these conditions and to be honest they need to be looking strong because they've had a as i said very shaky last two episodes mclaren have after being so consistent they definitely haven't looked as great durability may be coming into play for them in this season of course it was always going to be a factor in 2026 with brand new power unit regulations you can see the rain has subsided a little bit, not as much uh, falling from the sky, so definitely now actually intermediate, and so this may make this session a little bit closer than it was in Q1, because I really feel like some maybe even did go out on full wet at the start of that uh, session, and then that's why the field spread was so high, you know, two seconds between, you know, first to like 15th place is a lot larger than we've seen before, and uh, at the moment, again, the second lap is going to be the more comfortable one for us in this session there's just something about doing two laps in a row for me in this game in recent f1 games on inters like i always need that second lap to feel more comfortable and confident with the car you know gaining 2.3 seconds is a massive amount of time to gain on that second lap so for me personally really getting a lot of confidence i got a bit of a heart attack fast forwarding to the end of the session because i saw myself and ghastly tumbling down the order thankfully it did stop and we're going to end this session uh, in P8 and Gasly P9, but others weren't so lucky. Piastri and the championship leader, Fernando Alonso, knocked out in Q2. Massive track evolution. It really must have been because I thought my lap was brilliant, but we've ended up 2.6 off Alexander Albon of all people uh, in P1. Logan Sargent, who I've highlighted here, has got into Q3 for the, for the very first time, I believe. Andretti Cadillac have made the last part of qualifying Hulkenberg, having announced his retirement, has made into Q3 with Golf Williams. So uh, he must be a bit buoyed and a bit relaxed now, having got that kind of elephant uh, off his chest, basically. But yeah, Aston Martin Honda looking very strong. I mean, in terms of R&D, they are pretty much level with the best team on the grid on paper. We just haven't really seen them performing that much this season. I think last two episodes, Sonoda and Albon have looked better. I think Sonoda was in it, um, you know, was uh, in, a, in a good P4 position position or top four uh, in Monza was it so uh, Aston Martin Honda also into the mixer so at this very crucial time in the season we're seeing other teams that aren't necessarily in the championship fight vying for these higher positions and that makes life harder for those of us in the championship fight myself Lawson Alonso uh, you know all of us because there's less points then on offer to try and swing it one way or the other and this is continuing to be a very spicy qualifying session here in Singapore because you may have noticed we're on the soft tires it's still raining but my engineers and all the engineers on this grid think it's time for the slick tires so I went out immediately to try and set a lap time others have got out even sooner sooner than I have. It's still a bit damp out there, so we just don't know what the grip is into any corner. I go across the line. It's only P6. We're 1.3 seconds 
off whoever is in P1 at the moment. And by the end of the session, it, the game is now telling me to switch back to intermediates, I think that is. And we've not got enough time even to do that to go out again. So we have to settle for P6. And the man who is on P1, of course it bloody is. Of course it is. It's Pierre Gasly. Remember Singapore last season where he was eight tenths ahead of me and I was shocked? Well, here he's 2.1 seconds ahead of me because I think he must have surely been the first man out on circuit in Q3 where the track was at its driest, quotation marks, because it was all still pretty damp. And uh, yeah, it's basically about who was the bravest out there, who could risk it. And Gasly's risked it all and got pole position off the back of his race win at the Belgium Grand Prix. All the momentum, you know, having won four races has swung to my teammate as of late. He's on pole. Lando Norris does well in second place. The two Aston Martin Hondas looking pretty strong. Sonoda up there in third place. Usual grievances for Ferrari and Max Verstappen, who did make it through into this session, but then left it too late. And they act they had no choice but to go out on Inters, which was never going to end well. They're, you know, well off, nearly six seconds off the pace of Pierre Gasly. Just showing, though, how much uh, the track evolved, actually, in terms of the level of rain at the end of the session. It actually did fully bring the track back to Inter's weather so it was a bit of potluck and who went the earliest. Logan Sargent will be very very happy with his P7 in Andretti Cadillac. That is insane for Andretti. They're the slowest car on the grid. To be P7 is huge for them and Hulkenberg as well. Our you know, rival in the championship, Liam Lawson level on points with him. He's three positions back so that's good news for me and of course Alonso wasn't even in this session so barring you know Gasly and Norris in you know in my, my car and and the Red Bull Ford, the other protagonists in this championship, they're behind me. So can't be too disappointed with P6. And I feel like we can definitely go and attack that Mercedes and the two Aston Martins. And then we'll see what the pace is going to be like versus Norris and Gasly. To be honest, they look very, very quick, but we'll try our best. But before we get onto the grid for Sunday's race, we've got an ad message from today's video partner. Yep, this video is in paid partnership with BetterHelp. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp could be the answer. BetterHelp connects you with credentialed therapists who are trained to listen and give you helpful and unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be hard. The right therapist for you may not be in your area or some people find the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy uncomfortable. So with BetterHelp, you can get your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that. Whatever's the most comfortable version of therapy for you. And if you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash Arava. Clicking that link supports the channel but also gets you 10% off the first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it can help you. To get started you'll fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at any time that's convenient for you and if the therapist you first match with doesn't really feel like the right fit which can be common when starting therapy you can easily switch to a new one at no additional cost. Some of us gamers spend hours in front of the screen so why not give your mind the same kind of attention. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. And again, if you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link down below in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash Arava. And clicking that link not only supports the channel, but also gets you 10% off that first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it actually can help you. <laughs> So that was certainly a topsy-turvy qualifying, one that can really rival a lot of the crazy qualifyings we've had in real life this year in Formula 1, to be honest. And let's hope, unlike real life in 2023, the race will deliver just as much as the qualifying has. We're P6, our teammates having won the last race on pole. Um... Yeah, I mean, that, that momentum he's got right now is a bit scary, but at least I'm taking solace in. I'm ahead of both my championship rivals, you know, the nearest people to me. Fernando Alonso ahead of me in the championship. He was knocked out in Q2. Liam Lawson three positions back. So we've actually got it all in front of us. As long as we just go forwards and overtake the Mercedes and two Aston Martins, at least, I think we can have a very solid podium minimum, and that will be a good bag of points to try and retake the lead of the championship as we enter the last third of this season. 
season, it is starting to feel like a bit of a pressure cooker as the stakes are getting higher and higher for these races. If we go to five red lights, it's the Singapore Grand Prix. Lights out and away we go. It's a good start for us. It's a very slow one for quite a few people, but Gasly's going to come across and block us. He's boxed us in in between the two Aston Martins. He's side by side with Sonoda. He's fended off Alexander Albon, but it's Lando Norris in the Red Bull Ford that is taking the lead from the front row. Russell's had an absolute sensational start. He's up to second place then. And Gasly behind trying to take the third place. He's all over the back of Yuki Sonoda from left to right. He goes on the outside and he makes a great overtake, to be honest. I can't knock him for that. Really great move on Sonoda to get up into third place. But Lando Norris leads the race then for Red Bull Ford. Russell with a great start up to second. Gasly third from pole position. We're, well, I say down to fifth place because I feel like we should have been higher. But Gasly blocked us. We had nowhere to go. It's the start of the race. You can't win the race on lap one. Had to take a bit of precaution. And instead, we just haven't gained as much as I thought we would. And uh, I mean, it's, it's still okay because behind, we've got Lawson and Piastri both behind the Andretti of Sargent. So we're still ahead of both of our nearest championship rivals. But this is the uh, rear end view on board from Gasly. And just look at that. We were so quick, but I had nowhere to go. Nowhere to go because I had just parked it behind Gasly. He moved across at just the right time to block me in and box me in to the two Astons. And meanwhile, Russell... This was the way to go. On the outside, he just made a triple overtake to get up into second place there. Great start from Russell. We should have gone to the outside, but it, it was tricky because I was on the inside line on the grid. So it was always going to be a bit difficult to get right to the outside. I feel like on the inside, we would have just been pinched in even worse than the middle. So it's just kind of a, a luck of the draw, really. But uh, then running on board with Gasly, just look at this replay. Look at this, darting around, moving the steering wheel as he tries to be as agile as possible. Makes a great move from left to right on the outside of Sonoda to get up into a podium spot and uh, well into lap three now with DRS aided. He makes a copycat move, literally identical to the one he made on Sonoda on George Russell. Pierre Gasly may have bottled it off the line from pole position, but he's got the bit between his teeth to try and recover. He's up to second. He's now got to try and bridge 2.1 seconds to Lando Norris in the lead. We're still stuck in an Aston Martin. Martin Sandwich in P5. Meanwhile, Lawson has cleared Sargent. Alonso has as well. Sargent and the Andretti. It was always going to happen. He's in the slowest car on the grid. He's down to P12, at least for qualifying. Andretti lived the dream for a moment. But yeah, Lawson up to P8. Fernando Alonso just about trying to get into the points main position. So um, they've cleared some slower cars. So now they might have a bit more pace, but at least we're still ahead of them. But the problem is... Kind of like last season, I am stuck looking behind me because I don't know what it is, but ever since they brought in the new Singapore layout, personally, I think the AI are so bloody quick around this circuit. Um, and even in the same car, you know, as Gasly, I just don't have that same pace. And I've not compromised my setup. I don't think our car is slow in a straight line because of anything we've done on the wings. I just don't have that acceleration off the corners and even in the corners as well. The AI are just doing a great job, but so I'm struggling to, you know, really attack Sonoda. I'm keeping up with him, but I just can't make a move on him. I am taking a bit of solace in the fact we're both catching Russell at least, so at least we can maybe make one overtake on the Mercedes when Sonoda clears that car. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my. That was a code brown. That was. That was unbelievable. How we've caught that, I don't know. Just had instinct to dab the brakes and go full opposite lock. We've caught the car from a massive slide. That would have been a shunt into the wall if we didn't catch that properly like that. We've lost the position to Albon, but at least we're still in the race. But we are living dangerously, very dangerously. And you can just see, I just don't have the same grip as these AI cars. We're locking up everywhere, not got the same rhythm and ability to dance the car around these slow corners. There's something in the coding at Singapore. I just can't, I can't drive it anymore compared to the AI. They're just so quick. And there's that replay. We really got the back end out there. We really, that was a massive save for us. But will it really even matter that we've saved the car like that? Because now, a couple of laps later, lap six onto seven, 
Uh, Albon is now one second ahead of me, so I've lost DRS. And now Verstappen has come through. He's powered past us with his DRS in the Ferrari. I'm going to try and fight him back, but I just don't have the ability to actually attack anyone. Like, I'm trying to move about to maybe see if I can go left or right with Verstappen, but he's already pulled away a little bit. We close into the entry on the exit. A bit of understeer for me. Not that great on the exit. Verstappen gains a little bit more. I'm going to gain back with DRS, but I'm just not close enough to make a dive. That's absolutely too far back to make a dive bomb. And so we have to concede that position for good. We're down to P7 now. We are just going backwards. We're now lower than our grid slot. And now all of a sudden, I've got my championship rivals for company. Liam Lawson, level on points with me going into this race, is right behind me. Fernando Alonso, uh, two seconds down the road. These are two positions, two drivers I cannot afford to let overtake me. With how close this season is becoming, we need to defend this. But can I defend this as we squeeze Lawson towards the wall but with DRS he gets ahead we are able to dive back down the inside we get to the apex give him a good old squeeze still give him enough room to work with though Lawson is still there on the inside he then repays the favor which is only fair squeezing me right to the wall that could have been a bit nasty, but Lawson has kept it. Very respectful there. Gave me just enough room to work with. But we've managed to stay ahead. But look at this now. Alonso's on the back of this. We've both lost two seconds in that one fight. But it's because I, I really need to defend these two. Because if I let them two go, they're going to walk off into the, into the distance, I feel. So we're really giving it our all. But my tyres are now going off, as you can clearly see with the oversteer moment right there. Um, shocking. Shocking. This is not the same car I was driving at Monza I, that I was driving for those three wins in a row. It really doesn't feel like the same car. And right now, can I even re-overtake Lawson? Because he's got me into the main straight with DRS there. We are able to go around the outside. It's actually a copycat move of the one he made on me on the outside. And the difference is we get to the apex for this next right-hander. Meanwhile, behind Schumacher is uh, fighting Piastri. I think that's Piastri actually trying to overtake the Ferrari. And the Ferrari may just keep that position. Schumacher staying in P10. Piastri, the reigning champion, number one in his car. He's kind of out of the championship fight. And he's still, again, not looking as quick as Lawson in this race. But both McLarens lower than you'd expect, really. And obviously, Fernando Alonso being knocked down Q2 lower than he expected, expect, expects compared to his teammate who's up in P1. Only half a second though ahead of Gasly. So that's going to be a close fight to watch on to. Uh, but for us, it's just struggle town. It is honestly struggle town. I'm just trying to defend Lawson and Alonso as much as I can. And you've got my teammate, Loving Life, nearly six seconds ahead of P2, attacking P1. So I think, you know what? It must be the tyres. I'm going to come in. That's the only thing I could think of, that the tyres were going off. Maybe the internal temperatures were a bit high. I was checking that quite uh, consistently to check the tyre temperatures because we have had this earlier this season that now that we've got to a maxed out car on all the performance attributes, aero, chassis, engine, this car now does actually affect the tyre carcass. You know, for many F1 games now, the internal carcass temperature hasn't really fluctuated that much since they first brought it in that first game where it was a bit over overdone. Um, but now that we've got a maxed out car on this game, I feel like it's very easy to overcook your tires like that and feel that understeer that I definitely was feeling. Just a lack of grip in general, really, no matter entry, exit, or middle of the corner. So we're onto the hard tires, a tire we, we know we like on this game that we can lean on definitely temperature-wise. So let's see what kind of performance we've got. I mean, it's hard to tell what the performance is like versus these guys because they're all so much slower than us, but we make an easy move on Joe Guan Yu. At least we've undercut Lawson. It's lap 12 now. I've been on these tyres for a couple of laps, and we are ahead of Lawson. So we've re-overtaken Lawson, and he's actually so far back. I don't know how the, how accurate that delta time was, but it, it said it, he was like 10, 10 plus seconds back. So that's a huge undercut for us. So maybe it's just the tyre wear on the soft compound at Singapore being horrendous as we make some easy, easy passes on all these guys around us. We're dark dancing around the Andrettis, looking to pass the second Williams of the day, Nico Hülkenberg, one of the other guys who did so well to get into the top 10 shootout, but obviously the car performance in race pace terms just coming through, and we make an easy little slink to the inside there, a 
little bit of argy bargy having to get the elbow out because two doesn't really go into one at that hairpin corner but we make it work and we're up into p17 and into some clean air to chase after then daniel ricardo leclerc up the road still plenty of others still yet to make their first pit stop in this race because they were on medium tyres or some of them are just being stubborn on the soft compound wanting to go a bit longer basically but let's see eventually Lando Norris lap 13 he's on the softs he's gone he's gone double the laps I did on softs just showing how little I had faith in the soft tyres Gasly goes on for another lap 14 laps he's done on softs I pit on lap six or seven wasn't it ridiculous so so mad which also does mean by the way as I overtake Leclerc on the outside of the hairpin. Although I've got some good pace right now, I've undercut Lawson majorly. Because I've gone so early onto hards, I, there is a worry about a lot of tyre at the end of this race compared to these guys who are only just pitting now as we overtake Felipe Dragovic and the Alfa Romeo Haas. But this is giving me spa vibes. You know, last episode when we were, you know, when we re overtook Alonso twice having made a pit stop. It is giving me the same vibe as, you know, we've gone early enough where even if we do face Tyra at the end of this race, maybe the benefit of this undercar is going to be so powerful and it is powerful enough to get us through side by side with Alexander Albon. We, I thought I, we saw the last of him as Russell. Oh, Russell's out of the Grand Prix. He was ahead of us, remember? He was in the top four fight. So that's one free position we'll gain on the Mercedes car there. And we've just overtaken Albon. He is going to try and re-overtake us. He's on the mediums, but he's on cold tyres out the pit. So we are going to defend him to keep the P13. But yeah, Russell out the Grand Prix. So that's one free position. And I just hope this undercut... I just hope we can keep the track position. But it's difficult. To say Singapore is a street circuit, hard to pass at. These AI, they're actually quite good at passing me around Singapore ever since the update to the circuit. Is we have to make a little bit of a hard work trying to get around the outside of Valtteri Bottas as he makes his car as wide as ever as we finally get into P11. And now a lot of clean air ahead of us to Carlos Sainz, the next car up in the Audi. He's yet to pit. Fernando Alonso's in the pits. Gasly is now in the pits. He went 15 laps on softs. Mad. Unsurprisingly, he comes out behind Lando Norris. But now he's going to be on fresher medium tyres versus Lando. There's a bit of traffic also involved. Lando Norris is stuck behind Piastri. Piastri's yet to pit. So could Piastri hold up Lando enough where Gasly could come in? He first needs to clear poor chair in the Audi. You can see, oh, Lando tries the overtake, doesn't make it work on Piastri. Gasly, though, does make the overtake work. He's loving that outside pass at that specific corner. And so all of a sudden, Lando Norris must be a bit nervous in the cockpit because he's tucked up behind the McLaren yet to pit. He's got Gasly now fully on him with a bit of battery use. And here goes Pierre Gasly. This is incredible. The damage has been done. Piastri has held up his old former McLaren teammate so much that Gasly has overtaken him and now he pits. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Lando's going to be fuming in the cockpit. But the damage is already done. Piastri pits and Gasly is ahead of Lando Norris. Schumacher is yet to pit in this race either. So effectively, Gasly will be in a net P1 position. Lando Norris in second place. Sonoda, I think, will be in third because poor chair and Schumacher will both pit. And that means we're going to be in a net P4, which will be pretty damn decent if we can keep it ahead of the likes of Albon to snap. And meanwhile, Lawson and Alonso, they're way down in P12 and 14. So they were looking pretty good in the first stint, but they went longer on their first set of tyres and they've paid the price because now they're having to make some passes to get back into the position they were in before. So you can see the extent of the undercut. The, the undercut I've got is pretty much actually about 10, 10 plus seconds, literally the 15 seconds that was on our screen uh, when Lawson made his pit stop. So that's actually quite a mad undercut, but obviously... Now it's just going to be a waiting game to see what the tyre performance is like and if I can actually keep this position because we are into P4 now as Schumacher and Porsche make their pit stops. But lap 18, still plenty of this race to go. Can I actually keep this P4? Because Albon is all over me. Two tens behind, DRS open. We go to the inside, but Albon's even further on the inside. But he's outbraked himself. He's a bit too deep and we just get the tighter line to turn in and undercut him there from right to left. 
to get up back into P4, but Verstappen's now in there as well. Can we hold on? We've got uh, so long of this race to go, to be honest. It's a long haul race, Singapore. Gasly dominating this one, though. 3.4 seconds ahead of Lando Norris in clean air. That's crazy. Where is he getting this pace from in the same car? Honestly, where has it come from? As we're now, again, looking at our mirrors, and Albon is going to waltz past us like it's nothing. I'm going to try and outbreak him on the outside, but I just don't have that brake power and turn in. Because uh, now my hards are starting to go off a little bit, to be honest, probably. Uh, as you can see, a bit of oversteer there for me. Lawson now is being attacked by Fernando Alonso. This is a direct battle between championship rivals. And Alonso is up into P7. Again, it's another pretty shaky race for McLaren. P8 and P9. Where is their race pace gone? Where has it gone as of late? Maybe it's just others getting quicker and quicker. You know, the Astins are up there. The Staffens up there. The two Red Bull Fords are looking a lot quicker, uh, you know, these days compared to the first few episodes of the season. But for me, the biggest question mark is, honestly, where is this pace gone? Where is it? Gasly, four seconds ahead of Lando now. And it's only been five laps since he overtook him. Um, that's crazy pace. Absolutely absurd pace. Um, and meanwhile, I'm just sat looking in the mirrors because now Verstappen is on the, on the back of this. It's deja vu from the first stint as I'm fighting these guys again. And again, they're looking to make an easy pass. I'm putting up more of a fight on Verstappen this time round as we're side by side trying to get the elbow, uh, elbows out. But we've got DRS, uh, that DRS straight coming up next. I think it may be inevitable that he overtakes us. We stay ahead of him for one more lap. Lap 21. Ten laps to go in this Grand Prix. It looks like I'm trying to fight for P5 because Albon's checked out. So can I just stay ahead of this Ferrari for ten more laps to just get a P5? No! No, no, no. No! The engine's gone. The engine's blown. Smoke's coming out the back of it. And it's a mechanical failure. And just like that, this race is turned from a hardship to an absolute calamity. We scored zero points last episode at Belgium. And it's going to be back to back zero points. Oh, bloody hell. I mean, no wonder the car felt so bad if this mechanical failure was coded in to come later for us in this race. And ironically... It's not even any of the other parts you would think. It's the energy store. We've not had a single problem with the energy store this entire season. And the energy store is the one that's gone. That's the component that's blown up our engine. You may have thought it might have been the internal combustion engine that was being worn out quite a fair bit. No, it was one of the parts that we've had no problems with this entire... Do you see a single yellow icon there? No. That and the control electronics. We've not had a single problem with it all season long. And that's the component that blows up and goes at the Singapore Grand Prix. And so we are walking to the back of our garage out early. And whilst we're doing that, I think our bloody teammate, Pierre Gasly, is going on for this race win. What a great race it's been then. Another classic Singapore Grand Prix. And they've held on to take the chequered flag here. To so, Natalie... What do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. I can't believe we've gone from winning three races in a row earlier in the season to now back-to-back -back zero points finishes whilst in both those races our teammates won the race. Unbelievable. Unbe I mean, never say never in Formula 1. Gasly must be thinking that because I think with this win, he might have actually now finally got back into the frame for the championship fight, honestly. Because Lawson and Alonso, I think they've scored some points, but not as many as you'd kind of hope for them. Yeah, Alonso comes P6. Uh, Law oh, wow, Lawson. What happened to him? He went out the points, P12. Unfortunately, we can't see what happened, but Piastri is the one in P7. Lawson didn't even score any points either. So it's just Alonso scoring out the three of us in the top three in the championship. And Gasly gets the big 25 points. Sonoda with a great second place for Aston Martin Honda. That's amazing. The Japanese driver actually overtook Norris in the, in the last couple of laps of this Grand Prix then that we didn't see. 
And so it means Fernando Alonso maintains his lead. He grows his lead in the championship to 10 points ahead of us. We're still level on points with Lawson because both of us didn't score anything. And Gasly is only three points away from the both of us now in P4. This has just turned into a four-way driver's championship fight. But honestly, Alonso with only what? Four episodes, five episodes to go? I can't remember, remember exactly how many we've got left. Um, Alonso must be feeling pretty comfortable because he's got, you know, it's it, it, it's in his park. The ball is his, in his park. He's got that 10-point cushion. And of course, like I said, with Aston Martin scoring well, Ferrari, Audi, maybe Alfa Romeo Haas, there's less points on offer. So a massive swing is less likely, unless you're Pierre Gasly, apparently, because he's massively swung this from two episodes ago. Incredible, incredible. A lot of you guys were, you know, obviously memeing, memeing the, the three wins in a row saying, you know, it, you know, it could make uh, the F1 season boring. Um, you know, me winning three races in a row, winning four races overall. It's far from it because so quickly that we won those races, so quickly it's gone away from us because... It, all the momentum is with Gasly, and I can't do anything about it. Like, genuinely, this race, I had no answer for him. I had no answer for him. The only solace in terms of a, as the team owner is we are still in the lead of the championship in the constructors. That's good, but annoyingly, Gasly's the one now scoring all the points again like it was last season. Ah, frustrating, frustrating. We've got to bounce back. We have got to bounce back against Gasly, against Alonso next episode. If we don't, I feel like it could get very ugly very quickly in terms of, you know, just bottling this championship. Guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, though, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.